Okay, I stayed the same, but all these folks changed. Uh, we're back with the community table. Let's do some introductions. Back at the show, Nadia Brown, professor at St. Louis University. Thanks for being here. Last time on the show, you said you might be leaving St. Louis, and we're going to talk you out of that, but that's another topic. <laughs> uh, also, Joe Wilson, back again, uh, Salute Law student. Thanks for being here. Uh, John Warren, commercial real estate broker, personal friend, if, you know, if I can publicly say that. I'm not Absolutely. sure. Okay, Absolutely. thank you. And uh, Amy Dunn, Xander, also with WashU. Uh, thank you all for being here. What, Joe, I see you taking notes. It, it, it looks like something may have resonated with you so far tonight. Just about everything hit with me. I thought it was a very, there was a lot in here that I was eager to hear about some of the, the people from the ACLU and from Sage coming in and talking about just, I was really excited about the uh, Supreme Court cases that are coming up and some of the stuff to really learn that you can be fired for being gay in Missouri. Was that, a, was, was that news to everybody? Or, <coughs> no fair being a law professor. Yeah, I'm a political scientist. Political science. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. I apologize. Uh, but but no, go ahead, Amy. I'm sorry. Um, aside from not, not feeling like I have the expertise to talk about much of this, I think that was a surprise to me. Um, I think what I heard specifically from that last panel that was most concerning was the effect that these issues have on our young people. Um, some of the quotes from the video that we saw and from here of students feeling less than, like they're not a part of something. I mean, that should be heartbreaking to anyone, I think. And for us to turn a blind eye and think that doesn't have an effect down the road on our community as a whole, um, I think is a real problem. That's what resonated with me most. And one thing I wanted to interject that I really love the conversation we have this far, but I think we've had a very narrow and constricted view of the LBGTQ population. So we haven't really discussed um, besides um, the guest, I forget his name now, uh, the transgender guest that was joining Tyler. us, Skylar. Um, but I haven't really talked about the intersections of people's identities, right? So thinking about uh, race, thinking about our ethnicity, their class status. We haven't talked much about LGBTQ queer youth um, and the suicide rates for queer youth of color are 43%, right? off the charts higher than there are for, for queer white students and, and youth. We haven't talked about the rates of impoverished, um, impoverished LBTQ members trying to get health insurance and different kind of issues that they face going to their doctors, if they have doctors, if they have primary care physicians. Right? We haven't even really scratched the surface around the complexities of the, of the population. Scratch away. <laughs> well, I don't want to monopolize. I know Joe has a list here, if you can see the I mean, list. I took, I took notes on everything <laughs> that was talked about. Um, I thought. Some of the stuff that, uh, the, the youth stuff was what I thought was some of the, some of the most interesting things. When I was going to high school in St. Louis, some of my friends were gay and it was, it was a very big deal for them to, to come out and say something about it. And I, I would like to say that we were very supportive of them too, but I know that the environment growing up, it's not always welcoming, it's not always friendly. When I grew up in a very conservative household, I actually came out, I was a late bloomer, I came out at the age of 27. Um, I actually had a more of a, a little bit easier experience than I feel like a lot of people have, luckily for me. So it's definitely tough to see people that grow up uh, with parents that aren't loving or supportive or family isn't supportive. Um, so luckily, again, when I came out at 27, all my friends were completely wonderful. My parents were totally cool with it. Huge Republicans, very cool with it. And I'm like, gee, I totally underestimated you guys. That's great. <laughs> um, so I feel, um, I feel truly lucky that it was a little bit easier for me. When we talk about loving, inclusive families, I, I want to be part of a loving, inclusive community. So this whole time I was thinking, man, I could use some education on making sure my language is inclusive, making sure what I say to people who are young or older, whatever age, that I'm making them as people comfortable say as that's possible. So gay well, yeah. Clearly, so, clearly not and I like want to be and engaged and want to want to be educated. Like, how can I get myself educated on making sure I'm being a, an inclusive community member of everyone? Right. I, don't, I don't know. We didn't talk much about that. Right. So I think about using gender neutral terms, right, and things that don't presume a heteronormative lens. So instead of saying, oh, how's your boyfriend or your girlfriend, like, how's your partner? Um, right, and this is a great discussion, right, about don't say that's so gay, or um, a couple of years ago it was really big in the hip hop culture to say no homo when you were referring to things that might have come off a little, um, that might have too come friendly. Right, too, too friendly or, or transversing these kind of sexual norms or, or deviance, right? But always just being mindful of thinking, what can I do that doesn't engender um, or, or create power relationships or power dynamics that don't necessarily need to be there. And there's other words that we can use that are just as encompassing and are much more inclusive. So maybe awareness is a big part of the battle. Well, I'm also glad St. Louis is very gay friendly. We are known as one of the top 10 gay friendliest cities in the country. We're actually the only city, and I don't know if this was already mentioned, I couldn't really hear in the back, 
uh, was the only city to score an HRC, um, um, I guess, level of, of judging different cities and their acceptance. We, we actually scored a perfect score. Um, so the, the only one, again, not on a coast. So I think Chicago actually scored below St. Louis. So I feel like while Missouri, we've got a lot of work, St. Louis City is very supportive. And even in the commercial real estate world, um, I've, I've yet to experience anything negative. Friends, peers, everyone's completely supportive. I've lived with my boyfriend for three years, and it's, it's been great. So 